this time of year is my all-time favorite. I love the smells of fall and I just love all the produce that you get. And as you can see here, we had a couple hard freezes and I have a lot of produce that I'm going to have to be preserving in the next week or so. But in the meantime, I thought it would be great to make some cultured applesauce. Now these apples are great. We have some golden delicious apples and I really like to do the golden delicious because the skins, I can use the whole apple. I don't have to peel them because the skin isn't tough and they have a wonderful taste and they're excellent for applesauce. So that's what I'm going to use today. So all you're going to need is about six to eight apples of your choice. And my pick is golden delicious. I really like those. And uh, make sure you wash them. And you're going to need some cinnamon, some organic cinnamon, some unrefined salt, and my choice is Redmond. I like Redmond the best. It's mined here in Utah, and it's a family-owned company, and I just love them. And then a quart jar. So this recipe is going to be for a quart. And the last thing you're going to need to help culture it is some whey. And whey is the liquid that you get when you from your yogurt or from like a lot of you guys if you use raw milk it's that liquid but generally with yogurt you'll see that kind of liquid that comes on the top so if you guys you know can make it yourself you just can get yogurt so get a nice organic plain yogurt and then you can make it and I did this so you guys could see all I did was get a unbleached coffee filter and then I put some yogurt in there and then you just let it set and then what's going to happen is this liquid that comes from it that clear yogurt or that clear liquid is the way now some of you guys may be lactose intolerant so you don't need to necessarily use a yogurt you can use a water kefir so if you make your water kefir or you need to get it at the store you can go ahead and use the water kefir all you're going to need when you're doing this recipe is two tablespoons of either water kefir or your whey. But all I'm going to do is get my apples and I'm just going to slice them in a few pieces. Now since we do live off grid here and we don't have that electricity, I don't have a food processor. So I have my hand chopper that I'm going to use and I'm going to put my apples in. my lid on and I'm gonna do a little chopping. I love this hand chopper. This thing it works really well. I'm gonna have to make my salsas and it makes a really good applesauce. Now I like a chunky applesauce so this is going to be a little bit chunky but if you do have a food processor at home you can make it however you want it. And the one thing about making this applesauce is I like things that are easy and I can just go ahead I'm going to use a lot of these apples today I'm going to make a few quarts of this cultured applesauce that'll last probably you know one two three months easy and then we'll eat it up way before then and do a few more And the good thing about making this cultured cinnamon applesauce is you get a great arm workout too. <laughs> it keeps me in shape. At the same time, I'm building good nutrition. And the one thing let me tell you about doing this cultured applesauce, it's amazing because I'm not killing all the nutrients when I'm cooking the apples because I'm not going to be cooking them. It's something that's going to be a raw live food. So you're going to get the benefits of getting that live food. So. That's why I like to have this kind of applesauce here. A couple more apples, we're getting close. And none of this is going to go to waste because what I'm going to do is with my um, the middle part, the cores of the apple, 
and any other extra part of the apples that I'm not using, I'm going to go ahead and use that and make some um, apple cider vinegar. That'll be a video for later, so stay tuned for that one. Are you guys ready for the secret ingredient that's going to take this over the top? It's maple syrup. So, some good old maple syrup. I'm going to put, <laughs> just like for the last video, it's stuck, I can't open it. Alright, for so you guys that gave me all these different ways to open my lid, I'm in an outside kitchen and of course I have to run back and forth and I don't want to run back and forth because I usually have one of those little rubber things that you can open the lids with, so that's inside. And for some of you guys that don't know this, we don't have running water to our sink yet. Doug hasn't hooked that up yet. So there. So that's why sometimes I have trouble opening my lid. But I'm going to go ahead and put a couple heaping tablespoons of maple syrup in my applesauce because nothing better that goes with apples is maple syrup and of course cinnamon. So I'm going to go ahead and put in about two teaspoons of cinnamon. Sprinkle that on top too. And then I'm going to probably put in about a half of a teaspoon of my salt. And then the last thing I need my two tablespoons of the whey that we made, or if you're using water kefir, you can use water kefir. kefir. I'm going to pour that in there too. I'm going to mix it all up. So what I'm going to do is just kind of blend it a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and put this back in my chopper one more time and then I'm going to bottle it. Now I said I was working my arm, so I have to make sure I do both arms evenly, so I'll have to try to do the other arm. <laughs> Harder to do, you know, when you guys are working. Especially if you guys, if you're cooking in the kitchen and you're stirring with the same arm all the time, make sure that you stir with your other arm too. you find your other arm is a lot weaker. like to taste my little creations that I'm making and I tasted it and I think I'm going to put just a little dash more maple syrup in there. And it should be perfect. That's the thing guys, you know when you're cooking there's no exact measurements, you know, you got to do it to your taste. So, but you don't want to use like half the jar. Just a couple good tablespoons is good on this one, two or three tablespoons. All right, I cleaned my mason jars. And then all I'm gonna do is fill them and I wanna make sure that I have enough head space, about an inch or so, inch and a half at the top. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this in like your pantry, somewhere on a shelf in the house and you're going to let it set to culture. Now one thing, this isn't like normally if you like when you do vegetables and you're going to let them culture maybe a week, 10, 14 days. Since it is, there's a lot of sugar in this, you're going to have a lot of lactic acid bacteria um, and it's going to happen very quickly. It only takes one day, two days, no more than three days and you want to let it culture at a you know, lower temperature, maybe 60 to 70 degrees or so. And this, it's good for us around here because it's a perfect temperature right around now. But if it's too warm, let's say you have a warmer temperature, then you probably only want to let it culture, you know, a day, day and a half, maybe two. Um, because what happens is the alcohols will build up onto it and it won't taste very good. So one, two, or three days at the most on this one. And then all you're going to do is when it's finished, you can taste it to see if you like it. And um, 
then you're going to go ahead and you can put it in cold storage. You can put it in your root cellar, you can put it in your refrigerator, you know, wherever, and then you can love it and eat it for the next month, two or three months. All right, so now it's time to let it culture for that one, two or three days. So I have an inch head space here at the top. Now you can do a couple things, all right, where you're going to let it set your one, two or three days. I really like the mason tops fermenting lids that they have. So I'm going to use that. So I'm going to put that on top and then I'm going to go ahead and put my ring around it. Okay, so that would be option one for some of you. Option two would be you could use just your flat, just like so, put it on top, put your ring on top of it. Don't screw it down too tightly because what you'll probably have to do is that next day or so too because it's going to build up pressure, you're going to have to burp it. All right? But it, you can do this because it's such a short time. Or option three, you can get your unbleached coffee filter just like that. Put a rubber band over it and then let it set and do it. And then once it's done after your one, two, or three days, then you can go ahead and put your flat on like this. And then you can put it in your icebox refrigerator or down in cold storage. All right, and then you can enjoy it and it's wonderful and it's a live food. It's full of so many wonderful things to keep your body healthy and strong and you did not kill it to destroy all the nutritional benefits from it. You can see as it's sitting, it's gonna start to get a little bit more um, liquid in it and it'll get a little bit more juicy as it sets. So I'm really excited to, to eat this in the next couple days. In the meantime, I have a few more that I wanna do and I'm going to use these little extras from some, for some apple cider vinegar that you can look for for an upcoming video. So I hope you guys are having an awesome fall. And why don't you leave a comment below and let me know what is your favorite kind of apple that you like to eat or you like to cook or bake with. All right, have a great one. We'll see you guys later. Bye.